Hey everybody, this is Nikhil Sonad with Quartz on a lovely Tuesday here in Taipei. I am looking at the Neo Kylian Chinese made operating system. This OS has been getting some headlines recently because uh, Dell recently said that over 40% of the computers it's selling in China come pre installed with this OS. So we got a version of it. Uh, this is not the exact same version that's coming with the Dell computers. Uh, we'll get into that in a minute, but I'm just going to walk you through some of the features. I'm going to log in uh, here with my password. This is a password. Um, super secret. Oh, I didn't enter it right. All right. Now, the first thing you're going to notice before I even say anything is that this looks exactly like Windows XP. And you would be right about that. Uh, the similarities, however, extend beyond just the appearance. Uh, the terms are very similar. Here we have my computer, my documents, recycle bin. Here we have a start button. Uh, you know, here we have uh, my music and all of the things that you're used to, the control panel, all the things that if you've ever used XP, which is basically anyone who's looked at a computer and is over the age of 15 will probably have. Maybe, I don't know, maybe 20, I don't know. I don't know, I guess it's about 10 years old, but anyway. Uh, but like I said, this is not exactly what's coming with Dell computers. Uh, what this says here is that we're running the, quote, community version of Neo Kylin. Uh, what that means is uh, it was a freely available version that they released on their website, uh, and it's possible that they were just kind of trying to show off, possible that they were trying to show that they were making an XP alternative uh, XP alternatives have a long history in China because uh, Windows XP is so commonly used even though um, it's no longer supported. So there's like a lot of security implications to that. But uh, regardless, they've made this thing that looks a lot like XP. It uses all the same language as XP and you even see that some of these icons of these programs look like Microsoft programs. So it's like, uh, it's pretty rip-off-y, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, just a quick quick thing about the name. Uh, you see this dragon thing up here. This uh, animal is a mythical beast called the Chilin, and that's what this name Kylin comes from. I'm not uh, totally clear on where they got K-Y-L-I-N, but this is uh, that name is a couple decades old, or at least a decade old, uh, from a, an old government project to create a Chinese operating system. Uh, so what you talk about when you talk about Kylene is, or Keeling, I don't really know how to, maybe just say Chilin, that's what the name of the thing is. Anyway, when you talk about that, that you're talking about that red animal. Uh, okay, so let's dive in a little bit more here, see what we can find. Uh, you know, what are these, are these actually Microsoft Word? Is, okay, this says that we are running China Standard something or other. So this is actually... It's not Microsoft Office, it's something called Neo Shine Office, uh, developed as well by China Standard Software, the very same company that makes Neo Keeling. Um, and, you know, this is a Word document, and you can do all the things that you can normally do with a uh, productivity suite text editor. Uh, you know, this all looks quite familiar, so. Let's not dive too deeply into that. Uh, same kind of deal with, you know, spreadsheets. You can make a spreadsheet. It does spreadsheety things like formulas and dates. Uh, and dates and formulas. Um, right, so you can do whatever you would like to do that you're used to doing and other productivity software. Uh, one Chinese blogger actually tried to figure out what this NeoShine Office thing was. He dug into the source code a little bit. We've got a link up to that in our story. Uh, and he actually found that this appears to be based on OpenOffice, which is a now defunct open source alternative to Microsoft Office. Uh, it's no longer maintained, but it looks like China Standard Software has taken a previous version and modified it. Uh, right, okay, so what else can we find? We've got some other programs, we've got some uh, games here, it looks like uh, 
the things that you might expect from Windows Changer, it looks like we got some Minesweeper. Uh, don't blame me for, uh, okay, doing very well. I haven't played. I'm not thinking about Minesweeper right now. Uh, anyway, continuing on, we got Minesweeper. We've got, uh, you know, chess, other games. Uh, some other random software, Firefox. Okay, so here's the moment of truth. What's going to happen when I open this terminal? Is it going to be a command prompt, like a Windows command prompt? Is it going to be a Unix terminal? Let's see what happens. Uh, it looks like it's giving us a Unix terminal. Indeed it is. So this is pretty shocking, uh, given the troubled history, the adversarial relationship between the Linux community and the company Microsoft. It's pretty bizarre to be seeing a uh, Linux, uh, sorry, Unix terminal inside of these, you know, familiar XP minimize and maximize buttons. But you can do all the things that if you've ever used a Linux machine or you've ever been in that girl in Jurassic Park who claims that she knows Unix. Uh, if you've ever had to use a Linux computer, you will know these things. We can ask the terminal, oh, sorry, not. Uh, we can ask the terminal what sort of kernel we're running. It says we're running Linux, and uh, that confirms our suspicions on that. Uh, you know, we tried a couple other things. We tried to install software uh, on our own. That didn't really work. Uh, a couple of reasons. First thing is, if you're installing something on Linux, you sort of have to know what uh, flavor, what distribution of Linux you're using. We kind of narrowed it down for this one because of some visual similarities and because of the presence of this yum package uh, management program. It seems like it's probably based on Fedora. Uh, actually, the install screen for NeoKylon looks really, really similar to the install screen for Fedora 22, I think. Uh, so it looks like it's based on that, but you know, we tried to install Chrome. Uh, the way that you would on Fedora didn't work. Uh, it actually seemed to block it intentionally. Uh, and you can't really use yum to install stuff because NeoKylon doesn't uh, come with any of the package information, so it doesn't know where to find them. So you see I tried to install this program Lynx uh, and it says it can't find the package whereas it's a very common program. Uh, normally if you just installed right out of the box uh, it would be able to find that. Uh, so here it can't. Um, so I mentioned earlier a couple times that it's not clear how similar this is to the version it's shipping with Dell. So one thing that we can uh, check out here is the alternative themes. So there's a theme here that is markedly less XP-like than uh, the original one we had. And it's possible that the Dell version is going to come with something a little bit more like this. Uh, again, it's like these are purely aesthetic changes. So the XP thing might have just been a way to show off. It might have just been a way to uh, make sure people were familiar with the interface they're presenting, whatever it is. Uh, but you know, it's a super simple, super stripped down OS. Uh, it's arguably a good fit for corporate users or for government users, especially those that in fact don't want people to be able to install other things or they don't want people to do anything outside of uh, creating you know, spreadsheets and Word documents and browsing the internet. I mean, you, know, you can browse the internet using this Firefox. It's not clear whether this is vanilla Firefox or some version that they've modified a little bit, but uh, you know, it does all the things that it seems to be intended to do perfectly fine. Uh, the same way that installing a Linux distribution like Fedora or Ubuntu or something that's very well established would do, it would be no problem to create, to install something that would do all this stuff pretty easily. Um, so I guess the, the last question is, you know, how does this thing fit into the whole ecosystem? Well, Dell is shipping with over 40% of its computers. So, you know, that's impressive. But at the same time, it's pretty common in China, just like it is in many places, for people to just completely wipe that and install their own versions of pirated software. Uh, so that doesn't necessarily mean that people are going to be using it. Uh, it's also unclear just how many 
of those computers are going to the government. Uh, the government might want this so that they can have more control over it, uh, so that they know that they're not, uh, you know, using Western software that has some cybersecurity problems for that. Uh, okay, so this has been your very quick, rough introduction to NeoKylene. Uh, we've got some more analysis and background in our story, uh, which is linked to in this video. And you know, also if you happen to be watching the embedded version of this video, you can just keep reading because you're already in the story. And uh, we'll see you next time we review an obscure operating system.